Well, hello and welcome to another uh, episode of Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, uh, speaking to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our program is a uh, collaboration with the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy and the Digital Pathology Association, which uh, uh, works together with uh, PATH Presenter to provide these digital slides. Our case today, uh, as I mentioned, is uh, another case from the uh, files of the Stevenson Cancer Center. Uh, in this case, the patient came to her gynecologist, a fairly young woman, uh, with uh, the complaint of a mass uh, in the vulvar area that she had noted just to the uh, one side of the introitus. Uh, on exam, it was found to be uh, uh, almost uh, protruding from the uh, 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 vaginal uh, vulvar uh, junction um, and several centimeters in size. Uh, so uh, the sample was excised. It was somewhat polypoid, um, and with uh, reasonable effort at uh, getting good margins, they excised the lesion. As you can see, we have an intact squamous lining. There's no evidence of proliferation there. There's a little bit of hyperkeratosis, perhaps from irritation. Uh, and then deep to that, we have a stromal appearance, a sort of a submucosal type tissue, and then a gradual transition to this very mixoid uh, tissue here uh, with a number of uh, admixed vessels. So looking at higher magnification, we can see again that uh, the squamous mucosa looks to be fairly unremarkable. There is hyperkeratosis and some chronic inflammation. And then our normal submucosal, uh, maybe slightly erectile type tissue. And then deep to that, uh, just a very gradual transition to this mixture of very loose um, uh, mixoid tissue with uh, collagenous uh, bands running through it. As we look at these cells, we don't see any particular atypia. There may be a few mast cells in here. We see vessels of varying sizes, small arterioles, veins, capillary vessels, uh, such as you see here. Uh, so there's a mixture of vessel sizes and a very collagenous uh, type uh, tissue with a lot of space in between. Uh, this is characteristic of uh, the uh, entity aggressive angiomyxoma, uh, which is a vulvar vaginal, occasionally male peritoneal um, soft tissue tumor uh, that can, as its name indicates, have a, uh, a more aggressive behavior. And so it's important to recognize this lesion because of this deceptively benign appearance microscopically and to understand and recognize that this can become a problem for recurrence or can be a tumor that has a significant uh, extension into other soft tissues. So just to summarize there, this is a locally infiltrative mass usually presenting in the vulva perineal area, usually women, about six to one, uh, and they're usually in this uh, reproductive age group. Uh, its superficial presentation, however, may be uh, masking a, uh, a much larger internal mass. Uh, and so it's important to do a good clinical exam and even get uh, CT scans if needed to make sure that our pelvis and other tissues are not involved uh, because recurrences uh, can become problematic. And uh, patients with this entity need a uh, fairly long-term follow-up to exclude recurrence. Uh, should they recur, however, sometimes hormone manipulation uh, may help because these tumors tend to be uh, positive for a number of hormonal markers. Um, there are other tumors that enter into the uh, differential here and sometimes are confusing uh, because the names are somewhat similar. So we have uh, the entity angiomyofibroblastoma that's in the literature, and that also can be hormone positive, can be uh, uh, Desmond positive and Bimentin CD34 positive. Uh, it can have some of the same features of aggressive angiomyxoma, although, as you'll see in a moment, the histology is not particularly uh, similar. We also have myofibroblastoma, uh, which again can have hormone positivity, Desmond actin, uh, usually actin negative, um, yeah, but uh, uh, it has some other similarities. HGMA2 and BCL2 sometimes can help differentiate these two because they have uh, different uh, features, but these are not, uh, this is not always a commonly available marker. 
Uh, and then the cellular angiofibroma or fibroepithelial polyp of the vulvo, vulvovaginal area can also appear uh, similar to these in some circumstances. And of course, anything else that has myxoid uh, tissue can uh, uh, present in this location, sometimes solitary fibrous tumors, GI stromal tumors, off tissue myxomas, et cetera, et cetera, can all enter into our differential considerations in this location and uh, merit uh, some thinking. I thought it might be useful, however, to look at an angiomyofibroblastoma to just illustrate for you how different this appearance this appears. Uh, so this is a myofibroblastoma, and as you see, it's nearly solid, very little, if any, myxoid tissue, um, and you see there's no big gaping variable vet sized vessels. Um, so when we go to high, higher magnification on this tumor, uh, we see that there are a few strands of uh, vascular tissue uh, here, spindle-shaped cells, uh, but there's not a lot of these big variable vessels um, and mostly it's just this spindle-shaped stroma that are the myofibroblastic cells and would stain with uh, Desmond and uh, some actins. Uh, in contrast, myofibroblastoma uh, may have a little bit more myxoid appearance in some areas like this and some of a nodularity appearance. Here's the surface up here. Uh, but it doesn't have quite the same myxoid character. And again, we don't see that variability of vessel sizes. We see just a minimal amount of uh, vasculature. Uh, so it's not really very a vascular tumor. And so uh, it's appropriately named, it isn't an angio uh, myofibro, it's a, it's a myofibroblastoma. Um, but that gives you a flavor for how these uh, tumors are different even though uh, they can uh, be found in the differential diagnosis and present uh, in a similar location, uh, their uh, histolog histologic findings uh, almost immediately will allow you to exclude them from consideration uh, in the uh, uh, aggressive angiomyxoid uh, tumors. So uh, that brings us to the rapid conclusion, today's final diagnosis, aggressive angiomyxoma a deceptively benign lesion that may be locally aggressive and uh, needs uh, follow-up. I hope that's been helpful. I'll put in the notes below the links to these digital slides so that you can examine them in greater detail if you'd like later. I hope you'll join me again and uh, we'll bring a few more things into focus. Uh, please subscribe and uh, so you won't miss any of the uh, new additions to this channel. And uh, please share your comments and uh, feedback uh, at any of the above sites. And I'll also put my uh, 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 contact information in the uh, comments. Thanks very much and see you next time.